So today's talk is about strategies for effective semester system. And uh, I have kind of example for you people. So today, today's activity, we will start with an example that consider a situation. And let's, in that situation, that let's suppose any one of you is planning to build a three-story building. So if you are, if you are planning to build a three-story buildings, then you need a design. So for design, you will go to engineers. And let's suppose we have two engineers in that city. One is engineer A and the other one is engineer B. Now, the qualities of engineer A is he is a noble man, he is humble, he is open-minded, he is generous, he is cultured, but the problem with him is he is not well educated. His degree is from some university where he didn't study. He doesn't have enough skills of the subject. So this is engineer A. Although he is a thorough gentleman, but the problem with him is, is that he doesn't have the skills required for engineer. Then there is another engineer as we discussed, engineer B. Uh, he's a mean person. He's arrogant. He's close-minded. He's greedy, cruel, selfish. But he has one quality, and that one quality is he got his degree from some good universities, from the best university, and he knows his subject. He knows the engineering. He knows stresses and strains. He knows what needs to be where. Now the question comes, that we were looking for a design of a three-story building. So what, which engineer will you prepare? Engineer A or engineer B? Of course B, right? Because we go to the engineer just because we need a design from him. And the design is based on what? On his knowledge. That's it. Like his moral, his values and th th things like that. There is a, those, most of those things people learn from their families. But from the university, we expect that at least the person would have learned from a college the required knowledge. So anyway, the basic criteria for picking of, uh, of the engineer was his, his knowledge. It was his knowledge. And for, for his knowledge, you people picked engineer B. Although maybe engineer A was your friend. But when you are planning to design a, a three-story building, you would never even design even by your brother, if you know that your brother knowledge is enough of that level. So this thing, the knowledge, this is very important. Knowledge is very important. Now this engineer is a product of, of a university. Engineer is a product of a university. So engineer A 
is produced by a Pakistani university and engineer B is produced maybe from a, from a US university. Maybe from a US, maybe from MIT, maybe from Caltech. So this is the knowledge that makes engineer better or poor or bad. Now our colleges, coming to the point, our colleges and universities are factories producing engineer A and engineer B. So those factories, those factories which are producing engineer A, although they are producing, although they are giving them degrees, but their product has no worth in the, in the market. They don't have any worth. However, the university is producing product like engineer B with sound knowledge and sound skills. They have worth. So our institutions, our universities and our colleges, mostly we are producing A. We will need to come out from the comfort zone and we will need to focus on our product and we will do it because the competition is global. If a student from a college of Dera Ismail Khan earns degree Historically, he would have, they used to compete here within the province or within the country, but now that product or that student has to compete globally for a job. He will be competing students with Japan. He will be competed, competing students with Germany with Canada, with USA, with UK. So if your product is, is good, then your product will be sold in the market, in the job market. But if your product is bad, even with 4C GPA, nobody will care for it even you will not hire in your own institution. So, now if we want to make our product worthy, if we want to make our product, you know, like of that level, which can be sold in the, glo in the global market, we will have to come out from our com comfort zone. Our comfort comfort zone of life, uh, as I, I discussed yesterday, that usually like in colleges and universities, we, we live life like a pensioner person. Like a pensioner. So we will have to come out from that comfort zone. We will, we will need to study, we will need to work hard, we will need to put energies in, in our product. So when we put our energies in our products, our products will be the best. And then we will not complain when the world is against us. The world is not against us. We ourselves are against ourselves. Because time has no value in this country. Everything has worth, everything has value. Time has no value and time has no worth. Think about your employees. 
they go and they sit in, in, in a tea shop and they spend hours and hours and hours just backbiting each other, backbiting the government, backbiting the principal. So if time had a worth here, these people that would have spent that time in studying, grading assignment, pre preparing for classes. So, the main issue comes here, that if we are producing professors, we are producing engineers, we are producing teachers, we are producing lecturers, we are producing lawyers, we are producing businessmen, we are producing physicians, surgeons, you name it. Of the level of engineer A, of the level of engineer A of very poor quality, if all these people, pharmacist, and whatever you name it, if they go to the society, when they go and they work and they run all the organization of this country, then by changing the prime minister, by changing the president, by changing the chief ministers, ministers, by changing the army, by changing anything. If a person say, say, says that Pakistan will change, it will never change. It will never. Because engineer A doesn't know about engineering. If I call it like a pharmacist, doesn't know the pharmacy. The chemist doesn't know chemistry. The physicist doesn't know physics. Lawyer doesn't know law and respect the law. Businessman doesn't know business ethics. And teacher doesn't know the value and worth of time and education. So where are we going? Nowhere. We will be moving around in the same vicious circle. There is no way out for us. This mulk will never change as long as our higher education changes. Our higher education changes. Because if you if you if you think the qualities of a leader being a Muslim, the first quality, he should be knowledgeable. He should be, he or she should be knowledgeable. Now, if I compare, as I said yesterday, at the range of one to 10, if I compare our education with the US, we stand at, at one or two. We will have to bring it from the level of one or two to the level 10 to complete the world. And for that, once again, we will have to come out from the comfort zone. We will have to come out from the comfort zone. We will have to, to mobilize all of our faculty members. We will have to understand the process. We will have to be involved in the process. We will have to take steps. And we will not have to compromise things. And we will have to come out of this tribal mind. That everybody is thinking of his family. Everybody is thinking of his religion. Everybody is thinking of his language, of his area. Being in higher education, we will, we, we will need to come out from this 
bad kind of mentality. We will, we will need people. We will appreciate people. I worked in USA and it was like just after 9-11. 2001, I taught a course. Being a Muslim, they didn't say that this is a Muslim from Pakistan. They awarded me as a best teaching excellence award. So if we discriminate, we discriminate our neighbor, we discriminate our brother, we discriminate our cousin. We call him as a tarbur, our enemy. Where are we going? What sort of society is this? And this is you to change the thing. You, the academic leaders, you can change it. If you, if you want to. If you're ready for it. Nobody else can change it. So one thing... I want to, to share here to categorically that this is higher education which can move from Pakistan from developing countries list to developed countries list. Only and only higher education can do it. Nothing else. Because the word, like all the developed word, they say that universities and colleges, they play a role of engine of social, social economic change. So if the universities and colleges, they play a role of social economic change, if this is the concept of, of the developed world, so this should be the concept of a developing world too. So this is only the universities and colleges, nothing else. Once again, here I will share the complaint of many people. Like when we are in higher education, so the people, they say that the stuff coming from the schools is bad. This is just a lame excuse. This is a very lame excuse. I taught in USA, and I have seen that they have poor students after 12th grade than we have here, here in Pakistan. After 12th grade, so like out of four students in high school in USA, at least one uses drugs. Imagine what will be the output of that. But once these kids from 12th grade enters into a college or university, then everything changes for them. And those people who were very poor in education they become the best leaders of the world because they have very good practices of higher education. They have good practices in colleges and they have good practices at universities. Because today when we talk, that difference has been gone. We and you, we are at the same level. We are talking of the same level and that level is higher education. Here is uh, John F. Kennedy, this is an uh, American president, the popular, the most popular American president. And he says that, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Here, you know, when we are in a college, we are always asking, what this college has done for me? Why my pay is like this? Why the house is like this? Why my office is like this? 
So we never talk about our responsibilities and we never talk about our duties. We never think that what we can do for the country. We are always asking and looking what the country is doing for us. So this is a very important quote and we all should should keep it with ourselves and we should also share this with our, our other faculty members. Global competition, this is the same, the same discussion. That the biggest product of Pakistan is human resource, the biggest product. And hence the quality of our product, the quality of our product means graduates of colleges and universities, should be at least at the level of the product of the developed countries for global acceptance. If we want to play our role in the whole world, we will have to uplift the quality of higher education. So the quality of our graduate which is the, the product of colleges and university goes up and it reaches to the level of the developed world. This is very important for all of us. Uh, so let's talk about a couple strategies uh, that how we can uplift this quality. So a couple strategies will be discussed. The first strategy, understanding learning pyramid. So look at this pyramid. So this is a learning pyramid. In this learning pyramid, 5% is retained by lecture. So when you lecture, only 5% a student can retain. Reading, 10%. Audiovisual, 20%. Demonstration, 30%. Discussion, group discussion, 50%. Practice by doing, problem solving. That's 75%. And teaching to others, 90%. Our, our whole education system is based on 5%. Lectures. So, the product, the training of the product, the knowledge of the product, the skills of the product, that is 5% of the expected 100%. So how a 5% can compete 100%? So we will need to, to think about this learning pyramid. We will start from here. So we will implement all these strategies and for that, once again, we will have to bring out our faculty members from the comfort zone. We will have to bring them out from coffee shops, from tea shops, from bake biting, from discussion, from politics. We will have to bring them to do all these practices for the learning of the students. So, strategy two, standard textbooks. Like, we are lacking standard textbooks in this country. Annual system, all of you know. All you need is three years paper, just solve them and then you can get first division. No book, no nothing. Then the books, if we talk about books, it's we 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 pick some some kind of you know like like low level books. So we will need to switch from from these practices from notes. We will need to to leave to stop the practices of low level textbooks and notes and those things, and we will have to move to standard, standard textbooks. 
without standard textbooks, we can go nowhere. Because US higher education system, the system we have adopted, this is a bookish system. This is a bookish system. Once again, I say this. This is totally based on a standard textbook. You, we will have to learn the book, and then we will have to teach the book. So with that, what, would, what will happen? It will uplift our, our intellectual level. It will uplift our knowledge. It will uplift our understanding. And when our level goes up, automatically we will also, you know, like, uh, like teach in a better methods, better techniques, then we will be asking our students to read books, solve problems, do discussion. So then at the end, our product will be, will be prepared for the, for the whole world, will be ready for a global competition. But that will require for every person to sit in the office. That will require for every person to sit in the office and work at least eight hours a day. If a person is not doing that, any faculty in semester system, we can never produce results. We will be producing engineer A. This is the time that we should think to produce engineer B. Engineer B for knowledge. Not for other things, because other things that come mostly, jo manners hote hain, kahan se aate? Mostly the people they come from their families. University mein jab jo banda aata hai na, aap usko kuch bhi nahi pada sakte hain. Aksar log baat karte hain, lekin jo morals uske hote hain, kafi had tak ho pakke ho gaye hote. 20 साल का बंदा होता है, 22 साल का होता है, उसका जो mindset, लेकिन knowledge, our main focus, that should be strictly on knowledge. ये हमारा focus है. बुनियादी है, that is knowledge. कि आया हम उस तरह से deliver कर पा रहे हैं, यानि we should be मतलब डिसिप्लिन का या कलाहेदा मतलब ये है कि कॉलेज में सिस्टम होता है एट इस चीप प्रॉक्टर चीप प्रॉक्टर और वो वो मैं कहता हूँ कि इंतिहाई सख्त होना चाहिए लेकिन व्हेन वी कम टू द टीचिंग हमें सोचना होगा इस पर ओके देन वी लेट्स टॉक अबाउट सेमेस्टर सिस्टम सो व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट द सेमेस्टर सिस्टम Creditor. One creditor means one class teaching. One class teaching, matlab yeh contact or plus two to three hours preparation for both for student as well as for faculty. This was what I was telling you people, that if a person is teaching one hour, he is expected to prepare in his office from two to three hours. And preparation, it's the lecture preparation, assignments preparation, assignment grading, giving them time, discussing with them. So this is the requirement of the semester system. This is why semester system is not successful in Pakistan. Because the definition we use here is wrong. We just talk about contact or, but we don't talk beyond the contact or, and beyond the contact or is the preparation. So a person will have to come at o'clock. A person will have to work. Chitna time hai, a person will be sitting there, preparing. Ek minute bhi wo zaya nahi karega, kyunki the person is paid for preparation for the class. Agar ye ho jayega, saari cheeze change ho jayegi. 
standard textbook, understanding pyramid, and implementing semester as it is, as per its definition. So we need more lectures, workshops, activities to understand uh, this is another step strategies for implementing semester system. And then we let's talk about professional training of students. So like we, in our, in our program, we have three months gap. So nine months there is continuous studies. For three months we expect that the students shall go and they should have professional training, internship. So assume that a student, like for, for one year, nine months, the student is going and taking classing, classes and learning things, and then for, for three months is implementing those things by using hands-on experience. So imagine that if, that if any person for each year spends three months hands-on experience out of, after four years, that student will be a very successful citizen of this country. He would have no problem for finding a job because he would have enough skills, he would have enough connections. So this is very important. Uh, this is exam and academic audit. We should have continuous academic audit that whether, whether the books, standard textbook is taught, the courses, the classes are taken, Quizzes are given, the students and the faculty, they are serious in academic affairs, so that will be our academic audit. So this must be ensured by all colleges and all universities, academic audit. Then at the same time, then we, we must have exam audit. We need to check the level of the exams that whether the exams, you know, the papers prepared by the teacher covers the whole course or not. The level is good or not. The, the answer papers, you will, you, we will need to check the answer papers that whether the process, the grading is okay or not okay. Whether they have discriminated people or not. So these two things are very important that we need to, yesterday I also discussed about this, that we must have academic audit and we must have exam audit to ensure semester system, that it's working effectively. Uh, and the last thing, it's campus management system. Here is the guy. We are working on it and we will be giving you that facility very soon, inshallah, to all colleges. Then you will not need to come to the universities, but from college, just by a click, can post your grades. Just by a click, you can, you can post your grades to the university. And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention.